Welcome back, mi gente. I'm your host, Ida Jogeli. In today's post, I'm gonna show you the best cleaning agents for frugal people. In fact, this is how I choose the most effective cleaning agents for the lowest cost to get rid of microbes and coronavirus in my residence. So, if you'd like to know how to choose household cleaning agents and disinfectants frugally, you'll love this guide. Let's jump into it. Picking a cleaning agent can be nerve wracking. Just think about the last time you went shopping. There are so many brands promising to have the one and only unique miracle formula that is better than any other. And on top of that, the formula is top secret. So you have no idea what you are buying or whether it truly works. That is why here at Jogeli, we are not swayed by marketing. On the contrary, we are convinced by the principles of science. And it is my goal to cut down unnecessary costs while getting the best results without compromises. The truth is, even I, a NASA grade engineer, didn't really fully understand the science behind cleaning agents and how to use them effectively. Similar to many of you, I've made all sorts of mistakes from overpaying for hyped cleaning solutions to using them completely wrong. Like how is a disinfectant supposed to work right if I wipe it off too soon? But then the pandemic landed on my state soil. The COVID-19 outbreak has made us all much more critical of what mumbo jumbo cleaning products we are buying because we want to make darn sure that what we have is guaranteed to stop the spread. Yes, trustworthy results are critical in these times. After all, the wrong choice in a cleaning process could could mean fatality, which makes me realize that basic knowledge about cleaning agents is an essential survival skill, one that should be taught in primary school, but for some odd reason isn't. It's about time for you to learn the best cleaning agents, how to identify them and how to use them. To start off, we need to remind ourselves of the goal here, prevent the spread of infectious diseases. And there's two main ways to prevent the spread of infectious diseases. First of all, the safest way to prevent contagion is to avoid exposure to the disease. The second best way is cleaning visible dirty surfaces and finishing off with disinfection. Moving forward, you'll want to have a sanitation process that meets two requirements. The first requirement is for science to show that it is effective. And the second requirement is that it is the lowest cost. Right now, aside from the danger of illness, the next biggest problem is the severe global economic slowdown. First off, if your expenses suddenly exceed your earnings, you'll have to go out and risk your health to earn extra cash. So you need to save every cent you can. Second, throughout these times, product lines have been disrupted. As you shop, you'll find that many staple cleaning agents are out of stock. Under these circumstances, you'll have to choose among cleaning agents with flamboyant marketing and inflated prices. So how do you dodge the duds and pick what's good? For that, we need to back up a bit and understand what counts as clean and what does it mean for something to be disinfected. Why do you need to clean at all? The overall mission is to make it really hard for the virus to survive on the surfaces that we need to touch. The first step in the process is to clean the dirty surfaces. The goal with cleaning is to remove germs and dirt from the surfaces. Reducing the number of germs on the surface is called sanitizing. You clean most effectively by using water as a solvent, a cleaning agent, and scrubbing. Specifically, detergent or soap and water work great as cleaning agents. They are also effective for removing COVID-19 from surfaces. Other than water, there are solvents that can help dissolve and wash away dirt. For instance, solvents like bleach and isopropyl alcohol. But they are extremely reactive with dirt and can form byproducts. These solvents are actually so strong that they also classify as disinfectants. So so they should be used only after cleaning away as much dirt as possible with simple soap and water. Why do you need to disinfect? 
After cleaning, many microbes still remain alive. So the second step to making it super difficult for germs to survive is to disinfect, meaning to kill the germs remaining on the surface. Only chemicals that kill 99.99% of germs on hard, non-porous surfaces are considered disinfectants. The EPA states that disinfectants kill more germs than sanitizers do. Point often overlooked, there are still 0.01% of germs remaining, and you can bet that they are alive and rocking. Therefore, it's important to realize that there are different degrees of disinfection, from those that kill 99.9% .9 of microbes, which includes viruses, to those that eliminate 99.9999%, which includes vegetative bacteria and spores. These disinfectants are considered chemical sterilants, or high-level disinfectants. How to look up approved disinfectants. Okay, so to pick a good cleaning agent, you'll need to check that it can eradicate the specific microbe you are after. You can do this using its Environmental Protection Agency registration number, the EPA number. It appears after EPA reg number on the product label. With it, you can go to the list of EPA registered disinfectants and check whether it has been found to kill the exact bacteria or virus you are after, or whether it is effective against similar or harder to kill viruses. The database will tell you whether it is effective against common pathogens like COVID-19, the bird flu, hepatitis C, HIV-1, Ebola, and more. The site will also tell you the effective contact time, how long you need to let the disinfectant sit on surfaces. Otherwise, you will leave many microbes alive, which may become resistant to the disinfectant. And evolving superbugs is something we want to avoid doing. Notice that you can sort the database by product name or by active ingredients. Active ingredients are the chemicals that are doing all the work in disinfecting. Why do cleaning agents only list active ingredients? The government only requires manufacturers to list the active ingredients that kill bacteria, viruses, or mold on product labels. Listing any other ingredient is not required at all. Additionally, the Federal Trade Commission rarely enforces any of their guidelines for using words like natural, non-toxic, and green. Those words are essentially meaningless. Therefore, companies are betting that you will be swayed by their new and enhanced secret formula, that you'll just give their product a try. Save money. Choose active ingredients over cleaning brands. There seems to be an infinite variety of cleaning solutions, each being marketed for a specific use. The marketing messages will tell you that you need one product for each appliance, the oven, windows, laundry, floors, a toilet bowl, shower, sink, and others more. If you obey, you might end up with 50 different spray bottles in the closet. Instead of paying attention to branding, take a look at the ingredients. Interestingly, there are many different products, but really only a few active ingredients. Most household cleaners are made of active ingredients that you can buy separately for way cheaper. Uh, some that stand out are isopropyl alcohol, a sodium hypochlorite, and hydrogen peroxide. These are some of the best cleaning agents because they can be used for so many things. These ingredients can work well on their own or diluted with water as necessary. While you could buy the concentrated solution and mix it on your own, it can be extremely dangerous. And you'll need all the safety measures in place to do it well. Fortunately, you can buy staple cleaning agents that are already diluted at reasonable prices. So personally, I would rather pay a little more for a pre-made mix and save the stress of handling like dangerously high concentrations. Skip the additives in cleaning agents. You can save a bunch of money by forgetting that fancy dye and fragrance. Those aren't necessary to have an effective cleaner. Quite the opposite actually. They can be harmful for your health and for the environment. Whoa.
Aren't all chemical products safe to use? And not really. The way testing is usually done is by testing each single chemical by itself. But chemicals can behave very differently when mixed with other chemicals. Without regulation in place that enforces health testing on all end products, there won't be any research data out there. And without publicly available studies, scientists won't be able to fully understand the effects of being exposed to it. Just because a product is being sold doesn't mean it's safe. Cleaning agent price comparison. Have you ever noticed that when you're shopping, there seems to be two types of cleaning agents? Those that have minimalist covers and list all of their ingredients, and then those that have eye-catching covers and list all the active ingredients, but omits all other ingredients. The price difference is staggering too. Just look at this price comparison table. A branded vinegar glass cleaner can be over 197 times more expensive than distilled white vinegar, which can also be used to clean glass. That is crazy! Most of the time, if a product needs to spend a ton of money in marketing to differentiate themselves from other products, then perhaps it's because they're not so different. Transparency is essential for building trust. And at the end of the day, you are paying for a brand and getting a product. You need to know what materials it is made of. Types of staple cleaning agents. Okay, you can think of cleaning agents in three groups, acidic cleaning agents, alkaline cleaning agents, and alcohols. Each group can tackle different substances and meet most of your cleaning needs. First off, if you need to remove mineral deposits like lime scale, use an acidic cleaning agent like vinegar, which has acetic acid. Another option is to use hydrogen peroxide, which is a weak acid. Second, if you need to dissolve hard to remove fats, oils, and protein-based substances, use an alkaline cleaning agent like sodium hypochlorite, the active ingredient in bleach. You can also consider using sodium borate, also known as borax, uh, sodium bicarbonate, commonly known as baking soda. And lastly, in healthcare, there are two kinds of alcohols used to disinfect, ethyl alcohol and isopropyl alcohol. Other cleaning agents you might encounter are scouring agents that comprise of mixtures such as cleaning agents plus abrasive powders. There you have it folks, that's my guide on the best cleaning agents for frugal people. In my next post, learn how to use soap and detergent the right way. To stay tuned, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell right now. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave your thoughts in the comment section below, or join the discussion in the Jogeli community forum. I'm Ida Jogeli, thanks for learning with me today, and I'll see you soon. That's all folks.